Hey, look, everybody, a real estate award. Do you know who they give these to? Any licensed agent who successfully paid their mortgage last year. Anyway, on to the video. Uh, I hate real estate awards. My mom will be so happy. This video is not about real estate awards. If you're buying a resale property in the province of British Columbia, this video is for you. Because there's one document that you're going to want to review and understand for every single house or property at all that you put an offer on or that you're interested in. Because after you read this document, you may no longer be interested in that property. And I'm going to explain it all to you right after I ask you to certify this channel by subscribing. And of course, make sure you endorse the like button right right now that really helps me get this information out to other people that are just like you and eager to learn about bc real estate okay so the form that you have to pay attention to please pay attention to it. it's called the property disclosure statement the one i'm going to show you today in this video is for the single family or detached homes but there are other ones for many different types of properties the second most common one you're going to see is for stratas but that one won't be seen here today and i want to also point out that these forms are constantly changing it's almost annoying for me as an agent but the bcrea is doing a really good job of keeping these forms up to date in order to protect both sellers and buyers so this form is subject to change and i'm going to explain to you all of the ins and outs because obviously you not being a real estate professional don't know this form and it's going to be extremely important in any purchase that you make but i'm finding out through my experience that about one in four real estate agents also don't know how to correctly use this form. And in addition to that, if you are a seller, you're going to want to pay attention because this is the most important form to help you avoid lawsuits in the future. Heaven forbid you ever get sued. But if you do, I would assume there's a very good chance, probably better than 50% chance that this form is going to come up or maybe even be the reason for the lawsuit against you. All right, so let's hop into it here. Uh, this is the, the first page of the form is not part of the form at all. It's actually an explanation. So it's it's very, very good. Your realtor should provide this to you. Uh, and you'll then see the form continuously as well. But there's just an explanation page one all about this form. It has nothing to do with the form except it explains the form. Now, property disclosure statement residential. Super, super easy. This is one of four pages uh, the, I believe the strata one right now is like six pages long, but let me show you what it is you should be looking for. Cause as I said, this is going to be the lawsuit. I tell you, if you fill this out wrong, you're going to be in trouble. So obviously on top of every single page first, we're going to have the date. The date of the disclosure statement should not be more than 30 days away. Hopefully, um, the downside of that is if the property does take longer to sell than 30 days, you don't really want two different property disclosure statements out there either. So there's a few different things to deal with there. But this is the, the basics of it. I'm not going to read you each question that is on here. But here, here's what it is. This is uh, the seller takes this form from their agent, uh, their listing agent, when they list the home. And it should be filled out before the listing goes live. A lot of agents will do it after the listing goes live, but let me break it down for you. So there's a series of questions. Your answers as the seller could be yes, no, I don't know, or does not apply. Now, this is the first problem. So uh, let's say the first question here, number 1A is, are you aware of any encroachments, unregistered easements, or unregistered rights of way on the property? So there's a couple things we're going to look at here. First of all, the question is, are you aware? So you'll notice that I don't know doesn't it, it, it the question is are you aware so it's yes or no it's not I don't know if I'm not aware right so so your your question can be yes or no only so if it's grayed out here you cannot answer in that box so I don't know is okay in some spots not in others same with does not apply so are you aware of any unregistered easements well I haven't found one I haven't found a seller yet selling you know 80 to 100 homes a year I haven't found a seller yet that's been aware of an encroachment but this is their chance uh, so the answer is likely going to be no I'm not aware now here's where a lot of agents get it wrong and particularly unfortunately new agents that don't have the training a lot of agents will ask their client the question and then check the box. 
that is wrong and that will not hold up in court. Okay. So, well, I shouldn't say that I'm not a lawyer, but your answer as a seller must be an initial. All right. So you must initial in the no box. If it is a check mark, no bueno. If I am the uh, buying agent and you send me one with check marks as a listing agent, you're getting an email back saying, hey, man, learn how to do your job. Your seller needs to answer these questions correctly. The, the answer might still not be right, but they have to learn to answer it correctly. So yes or no. Uh, are you aware of any existing tenancies written or oral? So for instance, tenancy uh, can be oral, unfortunately. It doesn't have to be in writing. Um, so you're going to answer yes or no, but you have to fit your initial in there. So let's say for instance, there's two owners on the property. I own my property with my wife. If we're answering this question, we both have to fit our initials in that one box. Hopefully, uh, we agree on whatever the answer is. So this is going to continue all the way down. There is a few spots where there is check boxes. For instance, what's the water system? Well, is it coming from the government? Is it municipal? You know, you, you have some check boxes there. But really, you're going to initial in all the spots, stay on top of it all the way down. And then the seller is going to initial on this side of the form. And when the buyer accepts this disclosure statement, hopefully before an offer, but sometimes after an offer, they're going to uh, initial on the other side. This has been the coolest part about the recent forms dump that the BCREA did. They separated uh, the two parties to have interests on like different sides of the paper. So there's no confusion about whose initial is that or do they have the same initials? So there's tons more questions and they just keep on going. Uh, now, when I hand this to a seller, I'm literally supposed to be like, here's the paper, adios. However, what's the reality of the situation? Well, a lot of people don't know what they're asking. So I will work through this with my clients all the way down and answer any questions ha as they go. However, my initial shouldn't be anywhere near this paperwork, nor should my check marks. Um, so we're going to keep going down simple questions, right? Like to the best of your knowledge, are the exterior walls insulated? Well, you either know if they are or you're assuming or sorry, you either know if they aren't or you're assuming they are right. So these are, again, simple questions. You're going to go all the way down. You see some weird, weird stuff like, for instance, wet certificates. That's like a fireplace thing. Uh, certification, wood stove certification. I haven't seen many of them, guys, to tell you the truth. But anyway, this is all the information that the seller for a resale property is going to send you. If you're buying some sort of uh I guess a, a pre-sale unit, you're going to get something different called the the developer's disclosure statement. And there may be many, many revisions of this. It's a big fat document, usually like phone book style. Um, but this is just going to be a regular resale from owner, homeowner to new home buyer or new homeowner. Yeah, so again, more simple questions. Are you aware of any uh, infestations? Blah, blah, blah. Now, we're going to keep going, uh, you know, for instance, are you aware of the approximate age of the roof? There was one question here that I like to see often, uh, you know, there's structural problems with the building. Are you aware? Yes or no. Damage due to wind, fire, water. This one's super important here. Are you aware of any alterations in the last 60 days? So in other words, did you cover anything up for, for sale or did you fix anything in the, in the last little bit prepping for sale? So alterations, you know, you're not going to see the answer of like, yeah, we freshened up paint for the room. You're not going to hear that. But if they did do work to get the home uh, ready for sale, they should be answering yes there. And then they should note this. They should say, you know, this is number 3H. Then they should come down to the last page or second to last, I think it's the last page, and write 3H. Yes, we, whatever, uh, have replaced the flooring right? The common things that people may do in order to sell. So they should be all noted. If there are answers, yes, and it's not like a normal thing. Like for instance, are you aware of pet restrictions in a strata? Yes. Okay. Now on that other section on the last page, you should be writing, hey, what are those pet restrictions? Now here are a couple of extremely important ones. There's things like, um, you know, have you 
uh, had any work done without permits. Well, my Wild West city of Surrey, everything's done without permits. So you'll see that quite often. It should be answered if it is or isn't. Uh, that's one that's often answered incorrectly. But look at this. Do the premise contain unauthorized accommodations? Well, land of the basement suites in Surrey, um, along with a lot of other places, you're going to have that answer. Yes. Now, there, it's another video, the topic of what's a legal suite versus an authorized suite versus an illegal suite or uh, anyway, it's, it gets very, very confusing. But here's what is usually missed. And I'm going to this is very, very, very important. A lot of people will say, yes, it has unauthorized accommodations because the suite was not put in with a permit. Then you go down to are there any material latent defects? Now, what's a material latent defect? That is um, something that's hidden, that is not easily discoverable by the buyer or an inspector. And if found to be a problem, could cause serious financial hardship for the buyer or the new homeowner. So, uh, for instance, uh, I guess asbestos could be that. Um, you know, a sinking foundation where somebody's poured some self leveler on and, and, you know, put a new floor down. These are all things that could be material latent defects. If you lie about having a material latent defect, you're going to get your butt suit. All right. So that's one you don't want to lie on. However, I'm finding that most people, including agents, don't know that a suite or any other work done that required a permit that did not have a permit is a material latent defect because I can't tell with my eyeballs whether or not that suite has a permit. I have to go to the city. Now, a buyer should go to the city and find out, but often they don't. So if you do have some sort of work done in your home that looks like it should require a permit and it doesn't, or it did require a permit and it doesn't, you have to answer, yes, the house has a material latent defect. And then you answer in five what the material latent defect is. Now, here's the thing. People think I can't disclose that because it's illegal. Well, it may be an illegal suite and in Surrey that, you know, in my opinion, half doesn't matter, but it's another legal opinion there. Um, a lot of the time, people think that if they just answer in the other direction, it'll just be okay. It's actually better to notify someone of a problem and then have the home sell and say you knew about that problem than cover up the problem. Are you following? So... It's totally okay to sell a house that doesn't have permits. That is okay. What you can't do is lie about the house having permits. So if you don't answer this question correctly, uh, it's a big, big problem. There's a heritage, uh, not that many heritage homes, but there's a few. Uh, and then there's a bunch about growing pot as well. Uh, if, if this is ever, yes, that can be an issue, a big, big issue. Uh, they still haven't fixed that. And then in the most recent form, they've got all these questions uh, about radon. The strata one is even worse. I haven't come across radon yet. Apparently, it's a radioactive gas uh, that comes out of the ground, apparently, here in BC. Never seen it, um, but it is uh, now been added to the form. Then you sign off on the bottom, and any buyer gets to sign off when they're writing their offer before or maybe after if they have conditions on the day that they accept the terms or the what you've disclosed to them about the property. Now, really quick, let me warn you about this form. If you're buying a property that is tenanted or a power of attorney or an estate, or if whoever is signing for the property does not currently live in the home, you're going to get this crossed out. It's just going to have a big line across it. And, and that's it. We, that what that owner is saying, or that seller is saying, seller's not always the owner. What that seller is saying is I make no disclosure whatsoever. It's up to you, the buyer to figure out if any of this stuff is important to you. Now, that being said, if the owner does live there and they refuse to fill out this form, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that would be my first sign to go running in the other direction because they're probably honestly trying to hide something. Now, I did mention that you may get sued uh, off of this form. Any question that comes up uh, and we found out that you answered this wrong or you lied about it, 
Well, that is the easiest way for a buyer to come back and say, uh, uh, you told me that, you know, to the best of your knowledge, the ceiling was insulated and we found out it wasn't insulated. However, let me give you a prime example of that. That is, well, you could have gone up into the attic and checked yourself. So most judges are probably going to be like, hey, man, you didn't do an inspection. That's on you. Go insulate the attic. But if there is a misrepresentation, this form is probably the one that's going to get you in hot water because it is the proof. So you have to make sure you're not only initialing all those boxes, you, your spouse, or whoever the other owner is, are initialing all together in the same spot. But you have to make sure that you're reading and understanding the questions. And you better make sure that your agent also knows what the hell they're talking about. So before you fill out one of these, uh, if you want to talk to me, you can book a call with me right down below in the description right now for either buying or selling a property or even both. Yes, this has been a dry video, but I'm telling you, you are going to want to know all about this form. If you have any questions, type them down below. I'll answer them the best I can. Remember, this form is constantly changing, so don't rely on anything I've shown you here today. You either have to book that call with me and I can show you how we can help you or rely on your professional agent here in BC to guide you through this form. Thanks so much for watching. Please remember to subscribe, like this video if you haven't already. Make sure to check out another video before you go and we'll see you in a couple of days.